Hey guys, it's Ted Bogard. Welcome back to the Ted Show. I'm excited about this topic. We have Ashley Voltaline here with Get Me Automated. Get Me Automated. I did a little research, saw a little bit in her bio, and I thought, wow, I think a lot of us need to hear Ashley's story and exactly what she does. So welcome to the Ted Show, Ashley. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you for having me. I'm very happy to have you. Our dear friend, I believe it's Angie, Angie Aki, yes. uh, introduced us. So we got to give Angie a shout out. Uh, I told you before we went live that the audience likes to know a little bit about you, kind of your point A to point B, because um, you obviously didn't want to be get me automated when you grew up. So uh, tell us a little bit about you. Oh, yeah. So it's fun. when you say grow up, um, that reminded me when I, I was seven. I learned my dad got me a yeah. Apple computer Apple and taught me basic how to program. program. Um, so, so I went, I went to, to UCF, UCF and got my degree, degree in computer science. science. Awesome. And then, and then I, went I went and got a great degree, degree, degree in engineering. engineering. Um, um, so, so I started, I started working, working for a for digital, digital marketing, marketing agency 13, 13 years, years ago. ago. Okay. 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 And wow. um, I was kind of like the tech girl for them. And so, and then I worked for another agency and that, that was kind of my role, like um, the automation piece of it. Um, and so five years ago, right before COVID, um, I start went out and started my own business, um, Get Me Automated. Um, and so we are a digital marketing agency that focuses on um, mainly automation, the automation piece, the hard stuff. So. I love, yeah, well, let's talk about that. So I'm a, I'm a UCF grad as well the uh the automation i think people uh don't under first of all they don't understand it so it's 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 immediately intimidating uh people think it's going to be too robotic or they're like oh it'll it'll never work for my industry or um there's so many things and so many objections that people put up so talk about automation talk about what sets your company apart in the automation world and how does it kind of work like Give us an idea of like a, a client and how how they're using your services to uh, increase their success. Okay, so yeah, so one of my favorite um, case studies is a client. Then they're doing um, trim light. Uh, it's something I think they do it on here too, but it's in Chicago. So they install like permanent lighting, but um, this can go for any service based and you know job like that. So they have a bunch of guys on the road in trucks out installing. And they also have sales guys out selling. And so they obviously have a bunch of paperwork with, you know, you know, different quotes and invoices and things. And so their issue was that some of the sales guys were not showing up to appointments, like they said, and then some of the installation team was not doing what they should have. And so customers were calling and, you know, we didn't get this done. And, um, and sometimes customers, they did get it done, but the customers, you know, were just being funny. So what we help do is um, tracking all this. So I created forms on an iPad for the production team, for the installation team and sales. And so they, whenever they go see a client, some of the, uh, the form is actually automatically generated from the back office. And then it has to be signed by the customer and there's location data on it just to make sure they really were at the right place getting it signed. And so that's been a, really that's really helped their business a lot yeah just keep it's for accountability basically is that case study well i think that all of us could utilize it there's a lot of our spots and if you're an entrepreneur of any kind or business owner or cfo it doesn't matter who you want to have that accountability and you want to be able to track things and you also want to be able to communicate and there's a lot of moving pieces involved so i would imagine that you're helping kind of curate where that is an easier thing for them to all kind of keep track of. Right. Yes. So so, we try to meet people. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. No, go please ahead. keep going. Oh, no, I just was going to say, we just try to meet people where they are. Like, I don't, I'm partners with several softwares, but I don't ever try to like push that on people. It's like, if you have HubSpot already and or Salesforce, like, let's, we talk and meet people and see how we can help you with your already existing software to, to start over. So does it need to be a, uh, who's your target audience? Is it a large company? Do you work with individual entrepreneurs? What's, what's the, um, what's the best customer for you? Yeah. Uh, so small to medium sized businesses, um, it can be a solopreneur, um, as long as they understand the value of, of what we're doing and, um, probably have a budget and 
for it. So, so it could be, um, but mid size, I'd say smaller to mid size. And I think you just have to understand, right. especially the business you described, uh, it's super important to know where your weaknesses are. And so what you do is you take, and a lot of it's automation, obviously, I think all of us who've owned a business understand how important automation can be. Do you help them set up automation? I'm asking questions that I think they would generally ask. Uh, okay. Do you help set up automation? Does it have to be for just processes? Is it for keeping in touch with your database? Is it, um, talk a little bit about the different ways that people can use Get Me Automated. Okay, yeah, so there's um, the sales and nurturing, which is like email, obviously, like when you get people into your database, nurturing them with emails and text messages. And so that's really important now to make sure that we ha you have like your DMARC and stuff set up so that emails will be delivered. And then also to keep in touch every two to four weeks so that they will, your emails will end up in the inbox. So that, that kind of thing, get yeah, the sales piece of that. Um, also automating actual, when someone actually makes a sale, like via your merchant account and then having things happen after that, like you'll get enrolled in a portal or you'll get an email or, you know, all the things that happen after you make a sale. So it's, it could be a combination. It's really a great way to, to not only organize, but to keep in touch, to touch your right. people. That's cool that you can mm -hmm. use it for, for marketing and email. So do people, would they provide you a database of people and then you all would create uh, an automation system around that? As long as the database, um, I wouldn't touch something that hasn't been kept up, like, because that's just, you're just asking to ruin your domain. So if, if you have been keeping up with them and mailing at least monthly, yes, I would help. If not, then you need to go through like a retargeting and re-engagement campaign to get those. You can get, you can get on the blacklist, correct? Yeah, real quick. So <laughs> under, tell us a little bit about that. Like you're the you're the expert on that, but I, I know people who have been put on blacklist. That's a real thing when you are mm -hmm. off sending anything even to an older e uh, database, you can get put on the do not tell them about the blacklist because I find. Yeah, so cool. there's one out of every thousand um, if you have. So that's the threshold. Um, so if you're sending 50,000 emails, you're kind of good as long as you don't you're only getting a few complaints or, or bad email addresses. But if you're only have a small list of a thousand and you have 10, you know, you're, you potentially could be blacklisted. So those emails are emails that used to be valid, maybe like a cfl.rr.com. Oh my emails. God, I forgot <laughs> about that email. <laughs> right. People still use those. That's nuts. <laughs> but uh, so those kind of like, it doesn't have to be that specifically, but so those will be made into like, um, you know, spam, email addresses and if you try to send to them you're flagged and sent to too many and you're done so you can't it's super it. it's a big deal you all especially if you rely on that uh for, to do part of your marketing marketing or your follow-up um you definitely right. need to you said a re retargeting uh campaign would be better uh suited right just so take those emails load them into facebook and target them that way or Instagram and get them to sign back up to your list or, or text marketing. That's another way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Text marketing yeah. too. There's, do you work with text marketing or simply email? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, so yeah. To, all... I, I think it's, it's good to go together with along with email marketing and kind of send them a text and say, Hey, did you get my email yesterday? And sometimes that'll work to get them engaged. So when they, um, if somebody's interested, would you be their point of contact? Yes, I'm the front-facing person. Uh, You're always, the front-facing so. person. <laughs> <laughs> I love customer it. Customer-facing, yeah. Uh, I th I think that there's gonna there's such a need for this, especially people who are trying to maneuver through the different. Uh, I'll I'll use real estate because there's been a whole bunch of stuff going on in real estate lately, uh, and people are really needing to get back to the basics, work their database the way they all always should have. Uh, and so I think automation is such a great way for you not, not to have to be all places at all times at once and have an actual system, an automated system that uh, can do the touches and, and really create um, an opportunity for you to be out doing other things, which right. is sort of what you sell. Yeah. And not just, I mean, there's, there does come a point where you get have so many leads and so many people coming in that you 
it's kind of impossible to keep up with everybody and that's you know you don't want to let people slip through the cracks so no you do not you do not all right <laughs> ashley tell them the best way they can find out more about you and reach you yeah so you can just go to my website um getmeautomated.com and schedule an appointment or and it'll get right to you and of course i'll mm -hmm. i'll uh i'll tag um i'll put all of ashley's contact information that she's provided in the comment section below but y'all are looking for different ways to touch your database and get out there and try to uh, figure out how you can do better uh, with the time that you have and so automation is a nice time saver uh, and it still allows for personal touch and so i would encourage you to to reach out to ashley and go to getmeautomated.com. I love it. All right, Ashley, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks again to Angie for the introduction. And we'll see you guys thank soon. You. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.